Hey everyone, today is Tuesday, March 21st, 2023, and I'm heading up into the deep wilderness of Maine for a couple days to go camping and to see how the road conditions are. So this morning I left my house at about 7 a.m. and it's about to be noon. It usually takes me about four hours to get to this point where I am. It took me a whole extra hour today because there's just so many frost heaves in the road like this. See this gigantic ripple right here in the road? Oh my gosh, you see that hole right there too? Very easy to break an axle. That right there is like a 10 inch hole and who knows how far beyond that your wheel would go. That is caused by a rock getting pushed up by a frost heave and now that it's getting warmer, it's settling back down making a big old hole. These roads, this is the most treacherous time of year because now that the snow is melting, they can be soft unexpectedly. Last year when I was out here driving around during mud season, just like you see in front of me, the road appears to be dry. Suddenly the whole car sunk into it because there's melting frost underneath the road. But I don't think we've thought enough. I don't think we're deep enough into mud season for that to happen, especially if I stick to the main roads. Yeah, sometimes when you see dry areas like that, you can sink into them even though it looks dry. There can be mud underneath it from a melting frost heave. That happened to me last year. Sunk down, bottomed out, stuck for about 19 hours. I don't think that'll happen this time because we're not deep enough into mud season. You see right now the road is snow covered. It depends where you are. Areas that get a lot of sun are gonna be down to the dirt road, muddy, slushy. Areas where it's more shady from the sun, it'll be like this not that bad not that icy if it was to become very icy I always carry tire chains this time of year the worst time is it um, right now it's daytime it is now 37 degrees out tonight this is all gonna flash freeze this time of year that is when this road will become a sheer sheet of ice and also this time of year right now we are getting days that are getting around 40 degrees and at night it gets down into the lower 20s or teens that is when these roads become very very slippery you either want to be driving on dirt or snow not when it refreezes that's when it becomes pretty dangerous i can see it right now there is a bit of ice i'm on top of but i just got to be very careful driving over this stuff so under good weather conditions where i'm going today usually takes me about three hours under today's weather conditions because I have to go pretty slow I think it'll probably take me maybe five but I'm hoping I can get to where I'm going at least an hour before dark so I can pitch my tent get everything set up for tonight look at this there's a pretty big hump right here right in the middle of the road you literally could not drive a car over that doesn't have the dry, the clearance for it. So I literally just left the pavement about five miles ago and I'm probably gonna be heading out here maybe another 80 miles deep into the woods tonight. Uh, far away from cell signals but I do have my radio in case I was to get stuck maybe I could to contact someone. The road I'm going on today is plowed but this time of year Especially now that it's becoming uh, mud season, they're not running as many tractor trailers, not as many loggers working for the time being. They want to work when the roads are very frozen or very dry in the summertime. So this time of year they're not as active, meaning not many people will be going by. The place I'm going, you can go a couple days without a single car going by it sometimes. And uh, as far as the frost heaves, I went over so many frost heaves today on the main roads. That's why it took much longer for me to get up here. You gotta be careful. I was pretty careful. I slowed down just in time. If you don't, you can hit the stop blocks. Some of the frost heaves are lifting the asphalt so high up in the air. Take a look at how deep the snow still is here despite these warmer days. Really deep snowpack. Good thing I brought my snowshoes because where I live, we only got about eight inches left. Looks like there's a couple feet up here at least. Big old snow banks. That right there is the reason why we're not unclogging culverts. 
I'm sure most people realize that, but I still get comments like that all the time asking why I've stopped making those videos. It's because simply all the waterways are frozen solid. And I know last winter I made a few videos unclogging ice dams. Simply the reason for that is this year we only did one of them because this was a warmer winter than normal. To get moving water to freeze, you need a long stretch of negative temperatures to get that to freeze up. This year we only had a handful of days below zero. Last year we had 40 days in a row. That's why I was able to camp on a river and all that kind of stuff. Rivers did not freeze solid this year. At least not enough to camp on top of. Take a look at all this. You see how this little area right here is very melting and there's a puddle at the bottom? bunch of potholes too yeah it's gonna be pothole season soon I believe that's a lot of active groundwater leaking right there and that's why it melted so fast yep give it another few weeks this snow covered road is gonna be endless potholes you are the whole road is gonna be bump 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 one after another and you gotta also gotta take it slow that time of year but I would take um, dirt road potholes any day over Massachusetts potholes because They're dirt road potholes, so they're rounded at the edges They don't have sharp pavement that'll actually pop the tires So it's much easier to run over and if you're go if you're going at a good rate of speed These little potholes because they're out here typically a whole ton of really tiny ones You can actually hydroplane over them at just 30 miles an hour. You barely feel them if they're full of water, which is actually kind of cool. I'll show you guys when we get to another melted area with a lot of holes. Here's a pretty muddy area, about to go over a bridge. rough patches of road right here looks like they got a logging operation going on or they're about to I don't know what that's all about it looks like they cleared a lot of land like for a house it's a tiny little amount see this right here I just sunk into a little dip there's a lot of frost heaves here but they're not very abrupt which is the good thing we haven't came across any bad ones yet. Usually in the summertime I travel at like 50 miles an hour on these roads, but today I'm keeping it below 30 just for safety reasons. Some of the places like, right now you're seeing a lot of actual dirt, but there are some areas, there are sheer ice. I go down the hills and I go around the corners very slow with extreme caution. That's how you get yourself into trouble way out here. Not many people are on these roads. Today alone, I've only passed two people and I've been on the road for about 90 minutes so far. And it's just gonna get more and more rural as I go out. And uh, one thing I just came across my mind, why do snowmobile trailers have such tiny tires? When they're driving out here, those guys are driving so slow, and I think it's because they're worried about damaging the trailer or even ripping the axle off on these potholes, because the wheels are tiny. What do those things have, like an eight inch rim? They're very tiny. All right, everyone, status report. This section of road is actually very nice, and I'm able to go over 40 miles an hour comfortably. Back there, they must have waited to plow it. Trucks packed it down so the plow couldn't get it off. But here they must have plowed earlier so it was able to melt off and the road's actually starting to dry out. So mud won't be as big of a problem here in the upcoming days. This road, I'm actually making better time. 
And no, today we'll actually be over 100 miles deep into the woods. I just passed a sign saying where we're going is 86 miles down this road. Got a grader right here. Yep, you see right here, this guy's been smoothing out the potholes. It's already dry enough the road that they're able to tear it up. Wow. all these pine trees right here that are crooked leaning over the road there was a microburst here back in the winter time yeah here is the brunt of the microburst in this area right here hundreds and hundreds of trees pushed over and were blocking the road look at all that both sides of the road all pushed over in the same direction and that goes very far into the woods they probably lost maybe a hundred acres even. First log truck of the day. Look at all that dust he's making. Even in the winter time you can get these giant clouds of dust when the roads dry out. This whole road is very wet slush. That's probably actually cleaning the mud off the car, but I'm sure I'm gonna be very dirty when I get home. You know, one time, I, there had to have been close to 100 pounds of mud caked on the bottom of the car once. It took me hours to spray it off. And equipment working ahead. Yeah, that alarm goes off every time I shift gears because I have a bunch of gas cans sitting on the passenger seat and I did not click the seatbelt. Wow, the smell of the pine trees is really strong. It smells good. Always make sure the operator sees you before you go buy one of those machines. The roads are actually in very good condition this far out, surprisingly. It actually started snowing a good amount despite it being way above freezing now but that means probably none of this is gonna stick to the road unless it comes down very hard. There are so many of these dips in the road, frost heaves. That one's actually a culvert that may have got crushed. And look at that right there, there's a log on the side of the road. That's why you don't wanna be near those log trucks. Don't follow them close. Sometimes they don't secure their loads out here since it's their own property. Alright, the road is becoming a muddy mess, and this mud is actually a little bit slippery, but thankfully I'm not sinking very deep. If you can tell, there are so many potholes and bumps all over the road now. And this is all related to frost heaves. 
certain areas where the cars haven't smoothed it out, you can see cracks. If it gets worse, tire chains can also come in handy for this kind of stuff. Driving through a logging camp. I can almost guarantee the road is a bit more muddy here because this was graded recently which made it more muddy as it absorbed the water from all the melting snow. Yeah, this mud is very cakey. Thankfully the ground is still frozen just an inch or two underneath it. Because This is the same road that a while back I actually bottomed out for like 20 feet straight. Another log right there fell off a truck. But thankfully I didn't get stuck because I went through with a lot of speed. Yeah, this is pretty muddy, and this is definitely the greater went through here. Well, I'd rather be going through this than potholes, I can tell you that. I just turned around to drive over this bridge again really slowly. Take a look at how beautiful that water is, and look how thick the snowpack is on top of the ice. That's really pretty. That'll be raging in a few weeks if we warm up because there's a lot of snowpack out here. I just wanted to back up and show you worst mud so far right here. Look at this. Not anything to be concerned about yet, but it's over four inches deep in that little section. Check out this section of road right here. I'm the only tracks that have been down it all day. No other tire tracks. That means that we'll be nice and left alone when we're camping. We still got probably another hour at least until we get to the location. And it's already three o'clock. Our current temperature is 34. All right, we just went through an interchange and now there are a couple tire tracks and you can see they even plowed the road a little bit right here because they are logging in this area. And this area here, all those logs, the only way out, they're bringing them into Canada. See those tracks? It already ran really far. I just saw the first moose. I just stopped there for a brief moment because I saw a moose. I haven't seen one of them in a while and that's the first one I've ever seen in these kind of conditions. I, I know it's, it, this is actually what, the first day of spring technically. You know, this area, the growing season doesn't start until June 1st and the very top of Maine, we actually might be in that area. Uh, June 15th is the growing season. What that means is you can still get a frost, but typically the leaves are already well started. All right, everyone, the snow is sure coming down now. There's a good amount of it where it's able to stick. One lane bridge ahead, speed limit 20. This whole ride I've been having to go pretty slow or else the car will fishtail a bit. So, wow, it took eight and a half hours to get here, and I only stopped once for a couple minutes to get fuel. So, I plan on camping underneath this bridge, or next to it. We're going to go down and see where we can shovel out a pad for the tent, and where that would be best. Wow, the river is frozen solid, and there's snowmobile tracks on it. Wow, up here, definitely got a colder winter than where I live. So I think we're gonna park right here. See this little dip to the left? Usually that's a little 
road to get down to the river, most vehicles wouldn't be able to go down there unless you had a very rugged Jeep. I'm gonna turn around and park there. I'm gonna walk down with my snowshoes and just the shovel at first, figure out where I wanna camp, shovel out a pad, come back up and I'll bring down just the stuff I want. Today's gotta be a record for the most logs I've ever seen dropped by trucks on the side of the road like this. It's gotta be the frost heaves. There are frost heaves everywhere that throw things in the car. I think we're gonna have a fun time here today. It's snowing a good amount, and who knows, maybe the ice is thick enough where I would feel safe actually setting the tent up on the river under the bridge. Bridges usually cause it to not freeze as good underneath it, but this bridge is so narrow, and it looks like the wind is whipping enough that if we did set up there under the bridge on the river, there might not be any snow that we have to shovel away because it's the river. A lot of wind can blast through those river valleys. I want to look off the bridge before we go down there. You know, just this week, my car didn't start a few days ago because it needed a battery. Same thing happened three years ago. Needed a battery and just by chance, it happened like the day I got back from a place like this. You know, chances are, especially on this road, a couple people do go down it every day. I'd have to wait quite a while, but I eventually would probably get a jump from someone. But you don't want to take those risks. I just got lucky both times. Batteries, when you live up north, usually last like five or six years. I'm imagining mine went bad after just three, probably just because I drive so much. One lane bridge. You can hear things from so far away out here in the middle of nowhere. I'm not worried at all. So you see, snowmobile tracks, two of them, or the same people coming back. I don't see any evidence of melting underneath the bridge. Not at all. That's the river bank right over here. That's where I was going to camp, right there, looking at the bridge. But who knows, we might be able to go under it. There's even a little island there. That'd be cool to camp on, maybe in the summertime. All right, I just talked to one of the loggers, and there is no problem with par uh, parking here for the night and camping. But I am going to pull over a little bit more, just in case. He said that there will be a lot of nighttime logging happening tonight. So he said if I do decide to camp underneath that bridge or next to it, be aware, there will be lots of trucks coming by during the overnight hours. I'm going to take a walk down to the river. I have my tripod and my shovel with me. It's a good idea to wear the snowshoes anyways because they have big cleats that will stop me from falling pretty far. I just did a little bit of risk assessment and there's no big bumps on either end of the bridge or anything I should be concerned about you know because I'm seeing logs all over the side of the road I think it's extremely unlikely that a log would fall on me in the middle of the night if anything it would fall next to the bridge maybe break the ice all right so we're heading down this is where people sometimes back down for their boat trailers in the summer because this river at the right time of year it's fairly deep where you can put a boat in here and this uh, road I just walked down you can't really tell because of the snow being like two feet deep maybe even more but that is actually pretty rough and look at this um, I'm wearing snowshoes, but the snow feels very hard regardless. I see some pretty big chunks of ice here, so this river did go through a thawing process at some point. Yeah, maybe camping under the bridge is not a good idea. It is slightly above freezing and it's dripping a whole bunch of nastiness. 
vehicles are also probably contributing to that. Put that down for a moment. Walk out onto the ice. Here's the snowmobile tracks. This actually would be super duper cool to set up a tent right here. Just look at this. There's a bit of slush. It looks like sleet. But then that's solid ice right there. And this area of Maine is a lot colder than where I live. So I don't see it. A risk of falling through here. Yeah, there is absolutely no cracking, shifting of the ice. We're definitely going to camp down here. Right here. This spot right here. And then we can even watch logging trucks go over it. The guy told me that they're going to be really going over it starting at like 10 or midnight. Hopefully that's not too loud. I will bring some earplugs, but keep that in mind. There will be a lot of tractor trailers going over this. Like I said earlier in the video, I was right. They'll be coming this way. Canada is like another 20 miles up this road. That's all that there is. This is just a way to get into Canada. There's a checkpoint up there for the log trucks. They go into Canada. And that's where the sawmill is. So, it held a snowmobile without any problem. I'm walking around, no shifting or anything. I think I might still shovel off the ice. We'll see about that. This is way better than I thought. I thought I was gonna come up here today and this river was gonna be thawed completely since the last couple days were, uh, they were slightly above freezing here. Where I was, they were like 45, but apparently it did nothing as far as thawing up here. Let's head back up to the road and get more supplies, put up our tent. We actually have over two hours of light left, which is great. I thought we were only going to show up with an hour, which would have worked. This is a lot easier than I thought. I thought I was going to come out here and park on the river bank. I thought I was going to have to shovel away multiple feet of snow. So I did go ahead and get rid of all the snow because as soon as I take the snowshoes off, I would have sunk into this looser sleet that's on top of the riverbed. And without my snowshoes, I would sink way over my knees if I leave this riverbed. Because what you're noticing here, remember, remember earlier when I showed you that layer of snowpack on top of the river ice? Well, that's basically what happened here. The last day it got pretty warm. Water flooded over the top, making the snow very wet. Then it flash froze. What I'm standing on now probably is a couple feet of snowpack, but it added to the strength of the river ice when it refroze again. That's why I didn't have to shovel anything away, and that's awesome news for me. I'm a little bit tired after driving eight hours. Eight and a half hours, matter of fact. So I actually brought camping gear, a couple tents. Today we're going to be using a 
normal tent with a propane heater out here on the ice. And um, tomorrow night, I want to find another spot and we will use a hot tent. We'll see how that goes tomorrow. So, like half of the stuff that I have in my sled is going to get loaded back into the car once I get it out of the car. That's all for tomorrow. Everything combined, that sled weighs like 300 pounds. But I can leave behind half of that weight in the vehicle. And I'm actually happy. Because I'm actually in a location that I can watch the car. Even though there's no one out here. Wow, those trucks are big. And now I'm realizing being at the bottom of a hill, I definitely need earplugs. Those Jake brakes are so loud, they'll wake me up even through the earplugs. Taking my snowshoes off is gonna make this so much easier because I have a lot of things to pack back into the car and things that aren't on the sled that I have to load. I didn't expect it to be snowing actually today. So a lot of my things might actually get wet. That was awesome to get two trucks, gigantic oversized loads on camera, one after another. I've never got trucks on camera that close. Cause usually when I film them at summertime and they have to leave a couple of minutes because of all the dust. Oh my gosh, my sled weighs so much. Wow. Whoa! Heavy! So what don't we need? We do not need the wood stove today. Definitely not. Ha, I just broke this thing. Why do they make bungee cords out of plastic? They used to all be metal hooks. Everything wood stove related can come out. I want this jacket. I do not need a saw. Garbage. Don't need the hot tent. All right, I'll bring everything else. Sleeping bag, pillow, water. And guys, what do you think about this? If there's a piece of metal on the bridge, I don't know if there is or not. I'm going to go look. I'm going to set up a magnetic trail camera. Then at night, we can get all the logging trucks on camera. That'd be pretty cool. I'll bring two gallons of water just to be safe. And I'm putting that thing, which is waterproof on the underside, over it because it's snowing. I don't want everything getting wet. And this is thankfully waterproof on the underside. Paper towels, toothbrush bag, and bear spray. I highly doubt we will see a bear in this weather. And we typically have black bears, which they're scared of everything. It might try to get in your tent, but when you make a noise, it'll run away in most cases. Now you're going to see why I put a handle on the back of it.
That worked better than I thought. I thought it was gonna pull me down because that's so steep. Good thing I let off a lot of the weight. I have just crashed the sled very gently into a tree. Enjoy the ride! Woo! Almost made it to the river. Almost. This looks a little sketchy here on the edge. There might be a hollow cavity. All right, we're just about set up for the night. I can literally hang out, I can go for a walk if I want. Everything is down here. I can set up my bed and make dinner as soon as it gets dark, whenever I want at this point. This is only the second time I've ever built this tent. Definitely went up better than the last time. The only other time I set it up was the time we were actually on another river. That other river, we were right next to a big crack in the ice where you could see water gurgling tonight. I don't think we're going to hear the water gurgling at all because it's a pretty still area of the river and thankfully there's not much wind. If you saw in the time lapse, it tried to get away for a minute, but it's very still. Right now it's 34 degrees. This is perfect. No wind. 
I'm so comfortable. I don't need gloves or anything. I'm not going to stake this thing down. I thought I may have had to, but now I have the sled in here. I put water bottles in the corners, which when I start cooking are going to re be replaced by a heater and a really heavy grill I brought. Yep, we don't need to stake it down. And I really like this tent because it has a porch. You can leave your muddy boots in it and you're, if you're camping in the summertime. In the wintertime, the entire sled fits in there. And in the summer, that would be a nice place to just sit, you know, and watch an enjoyable river scene or something enjoyable out in the wilderness. Tonight, we'll be able to peek out and look at log trucks going over this. It sure is pretty now that the sun is starting to peek out a little bit. I'm going to head back up to the car one more time. There are a few things I forgot. I may have actually forgot earplugs, which might be a problem for tonight because of the Jake breaking. But if I don't get that good of a night's sleep, I'll catch up tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm going to go very deep into the forest with the hot tent. That's going to be a bear of a hill getting back up there in the morning. It's very steep. Still gently snowing out. Right before I walked down to the river, the bridge had a coating of snow on it that quickly fell. It has already since melted. So here's where we're going to be camping tonight. Right down there, there's the tent. Right in the middle of the river. This is an absolute beautiful scene off the middle of this bridge. If there was a truck coming, we would hear it probably five minutes before it even showed up. Plenty of time to get off. Every time in the summer, I've always been very scared and nervous being on this bridge with my camera. Because, you know, it'd be pretty easy to drop it through there. But I think today, if I actually dropped it, it'd have a good chance of surviving because it would hit snow and sleet, which I think would cushion it pretty well. There we are, perfect view of the bridge. Sure is nice out here. Without the trucks, absolute silence. I actually hear rushing water. There might be a area upstream a bit that's gushing a little bit more, maybe a waterfall, hear something like that. All right, everyone, so I mentioned the idea of putting a trail camera out here to maybe photograph logging trucks as they go by during the overnight hours. Well, I have a trail camera right here that has infrared. It can see at night, and in the bottom is a magnet. If you look down on my edge, the guardrail of this bridge actually has a bunch of metal bolts. I'm gonna rig this thing up, get it so it's working on a motion sensor, and we're gonna leave it on one end of the bridge. Actually, up here looks perfect because It'll be a little disguised behind a bush, although I doubt those guys would notice it or even care. They're driving cool trucks. I'm sure tourists take pictures of them all the time. All right, the camera is set up, but I cannot guarantee that it's going to have an accurate time on the screen. If you ever realize most of my trail cameras, I just cover up the time. I set it, but that model of trail camera, for some reason, it always forgets the time and date but it always remembers the settings for some reason. So see this? Most of the bolts are very crooked or they didn't cut them off. That one's actually slightly below the nut. So this one has a very good position and I even shimmed it so it's slightly upwards. Hopefully the trucks trigger that at a good time and hopefully it doesn't overexpose. I turn the infrared down quite a bit but I honestly have no idea what it's going to do up close to a truck like that. I've used it for trains in the past, and it worked all right. Although that was not the same type of trail camera. The one I filmed the trains with was a $20 Walmart camera. So we'll see how good that one does right there. So right now, I'm tearing my whole car apart trying to find earplugs. I don't think I have any. But I did just find a bear bell in there. And uh, that... Look what I just found in the back of the seat. A whole bag of them. Awesome. I had to buy these on my cross-country trip because I was sleeping at Walmarts every night, and that can sometimes be loud. Um, look at this. The tag from it. Everything these days has this thing for the metal detector. 
Because people just steal everything now. I learned the other day, and this is actually kind of cool. See this? I put this memory foam thing in here that I found. See this? And not now, but if it's below freezing, it'll save prints indefinitely. I had a bunch of things in here, and I removed them when it was cold out. It saved all the prints. They were still there hours later. So I wonder how it would react with me sleeping in very cold weather. It would probably not do that because I'd warm up wherever I am. I'm going to try going down to my campsite on this side of the road. With the snow, if I walk sideways, maybe I won't fall on my butt like I did in the summertime going down this hill. Not one slip and I walked straight down here, not even slanted. These cleats dig into it so well. But that's also because this is like rock hard sleet. Where I'm walking now, I would actually sink without my snowshoes. Look what we have here. Moose tracks. Um, there was either one moose who turned around or a couple. Because look at this. Moose tracks. And I, I don't know how often it, it has been snowing up here, but I'd say that was at least a week ago. Yeah, I can tell here without the snowshoes, I would sink pretty deep. Look at all the moose tracks. So it looks like it may have just been one, maybe. It's so nice to come out into the middle of nowhere and experience absolute silence. Even though I live in the woods, you guys can probably tell I live very close to a highway. So unless it's late at night, there's always noise happening. But out here, you listen, and all you can hear is a light breeze blowing through the trees. That might be what I was hearing earlier, not rapids. It might be wind. But now we're going back to camp. You see right here is a gigantic crack. Because the river froze when it was running high. Then it went down, and it kind of crumpled here. And this is what I was talking about. There is a possible hollow spot there. But the ice is so thick, I don't think there's a problem. I was right. Can't get back to the car without the snowshoes. Unless I can somehow get up there. Doesn't look as bad now that I'm up close. Good to know, that was very easy. This is why I went back to the car. Grab another tripod and another motion-activated trail camera. It's tilted upwards, and I even took a look at the footage to make sure it's good. It can see all around by my tent. If any animal was sniffing around, I'll know about it. And it should be able to get logging trucks going over the top. Although, at night, I'm not sure how well that's going to show up. I turned that one's infrared flash up all the way. Because might as well use the cameras. I don't think I'll find anything else to use them for out here. Get some good truck footage. Maybe make that into a short video. It's now 5.30. We have about one more hour of daylight. And the sun just came out. Beautiful looking. Nice big shadow of the bridge. I just checked this camera and I don't know why. It's already made 60 videos of nothing. There's not even wind. It got the truck that went by on camera, but hopefully it doesn't burn up its battery by the time some of the giant trucks actually come by. This scenery is absolutely beautiful now that the sun came out. Maybe that camera's seeing shadows. Hopefully that it'll stop doing that stuff when the sun goes down shortly. I'm going to go back down. Got everything set up. I'm actually going to start making dinner. Now this is where I need to hold on to the trees. Someone who knows about bridges, what does this look like to you? Does it look like they reinforce it at some point? Or did they just build it like that with the double eye beams? I just drew a gigantic smiley face. I got to go back up on the bridge and see it. This camera's gonna see me now. Here we are. The smiley face actually looks smaller than I thought from up above. 
Oops. All right, that was entertaining, I guess. I got the other one stuck. All right, everyone, I got my shelter all set up. Let me show you what I got. I got tons of propane, more than I need, just in case I ever got stuck out here. You know, I'm on a road that, you know, not many people go by. I've been out here now for about three hours. Two people got went by. So, like, one person every hour goes by out here. You know, in the summertime, I've been out here, and I, I've literally hung around this thing almost all day and didn't see anybody. So there are times when you could be trapped out here for a while, but this is a road. It's a permanent road that they use a lot. But if the roads were open and passable... I could find myself somewhere pretty bad if there wasn't deep snow, if you know what I mean. Because right now, every road that is open is being obviously used. So, there's not really a concern of getting stuck out here long term. But you never know what could happen. I am very, very far away from any cell phone signal or anything. I highly doubt my CB radio would even get anyone out here. So I have like a propane burner right there if I wanted to heat up something. I do have a bunch of cans of soup that I left behind in the car, along with other things. I got some frying pans right there. All right, on the inside of my tent, I have the nice bear and moose blanket here. One pillow, a nice pad, and I'm probably going to need that sleeping bag. I have two gallons of water. I got my clock and temperature. You see it is just slightly above freezing. It is reading about 34, the same thing the car is reading. Um, I got a tarp that I did not need today. I got my little buddy heater that I'm sure I'll be turning on periodically in the night. Might even leave it on low, just in case I do. That thing does have a built-in oxygen sensor, but I have a CO detector here. I have five power banks. I got my silverware, a bunch of headlamps, another thermometer I'm not going to be needing. Um, this heater and this stove both have clickers, but if I need to use the burner, I have a lighter in there. I have tape, a whole ton of magnets, tent stakes, screws, a bunch of things to build shelters, a bunch of emergency blankets in there. Not going to need any of that tonight. Toothbrush bag, bear spray, hand warmers, tripod. Tonight, I'm going to try to make a pizza. I don't know how this is going to work. I really don't know, but this grill here has a very heavy cast iron grate. I'm going to heat it up fully, put the pizza on it, shut it off, shut the top of it, and I think it will actually have enough residual heat to cook this. So I can potentially have two little pizzas tonight, and I got my tomato sauce or my pizza sauce. My Walmart at home did not have that, so I was going to use this. Somebody who knows about cooking, tell me, would this have tasted okay if I used potato? tomato paste. I purposely bought the one with the garlic seasoning in it. Maybe it would have tasted better, but I decided that I actually had to go to the store because I forgot my original cheese at home. Forgot it in the refrigerator because I couldn't leave it out overnight with my other stuff. So that forced me into a store that actually had this. Also, I tried this last week and that was very good. This is like $10 for the package. I microwaved it at home, but here... I can just pull a package out. It's in a bag. I can just put it in boiling water and heat it up. Then it has a plastic tray I can eat it out of. I think this might be a good thing for camping, to be honest. Right here I have some V8 juice, trail mix, some freeze-dried food underneath there. And um, look at this. I've never had those before, but those are very good, these limited-time candies. Reese's, uh, Reese's Puffs and uh, Blueberry Muffin. And I got some drinks here for tonight. Coconut water. Coffees are for the morning. And I have some of these wine coolers I bought just so I can have a drink tonight. Usually I'll buy Mike's Hard Lemonade, but I decided to give these a try. And they actually taste very similar, if not better. Um, these here, I bought these because um, it was $12 for a dozen, while Mike's Hard at the store was considerably more money. They were They came out to almost... Um, 
well, it was like twice the price, so I cheaped out and bought that. So, I think I'm going to start making my pizza. So this piece of cast iron right here is actually very thick for a camping stove. It probably weighs 15 pounds alone. So once I get this thing heated up, it's going to stay burning hot for a while. And because, you know, you, you can't run this thing with it shut. You see? If you ran it with it shut, you would certainly destroy these with the flames. But I think when this thing is just hot, I can put the pizza there and I can shut it and it'll cook it, I believe. We're going to see. I have my CB radio here, which also is a weather radio, so I can find out what the weather is. I found this stove here on the side of the road when I was a little kid riding my bike. After someone's yard sale on a Sunday, they didn't want to put it back in their house, so they put it on the curb for free. And it works perfect. Nothing wrong with it. So I did have to shut the door, unfortunately, even though it's still light out because it's just a little bit too windy. Things are flapping around, blowing around in here. Pizza sauce is good. All right, so I'm gonna put this off to the side. I hope we're able to cook that up nice. Let's start up the grill. I think the ignition works. Oh, it, it does work. I didn't even notice. I was expecting a poof. It probably lit the first time. It's on. See that? It's on. I'm gonna let this thing get nice and hot. That road and bridge flash froze as soon as the sun went away. It's all sheer ice. Wonder if the big rigs will be using chains tonight. So, no luck getting any of the weather stations. We're too far in the middle of nowhere for this to work. But, a lot of chatter on the CB radio. Because there's a lot of loggers around here. In one of the channels, one of the loggers was even saying uh, what uh, the trucks was even saying what mile marker they're approaching, so they know when they're going to arrive. I have no idea where any of the mile markers are, but I think we're going to try this now. So, this thing is burning hot. It's been running for like 20 minutes. Now we're going to shut it off. It's completely off. We're going to close the sides and. I will periodically check on it. It's not smushing my pizza, right? Nope. All right, so I, I, I think this may actually work. That piece of cast iron is going to be hot for a while, and it already smells good because something is already burning. That'll actually probably leave nice burnt marks on the bottom of the pizza. That might actually be nice, beneficial too. We'll check on it in like maybe eight, ten minutes. It's only been in there a minute, but I think it's going to work. Too hot to touch on the sides, but where the pizza is, it's cool to the touch. But it is getting warmer. All right, so this thing here supposedly has a 20 mile antenna, but am I correct or wrong? If I actually did have an emergency and I had to call someone, even though this can only receive 20 miles, someone further out could probably hear it, right? <laughs> 
Oh, this is a good sign. The middle is almost too hot to touch now. Yeah, burning hot in the sides, but the middle is almost too hot to touch. I think it's probably cooking nicely. The wind just became pretty violent. This cover up top, it flapped so much I could see right down the river. I'm going to have to go out there and maybe strap the covering a little better. Knock down the clock also. Let's see how the pizza came out. It's nice and warm in the middle, and it still has heat to probably cook it. Let's just see what it looks like after it's been eight minutes. <gasps> wow, it actually melted all the cheese. Oh, look, the bottom is just like I thought. It's a little bit more burnt than I thought. See, it's actually a little stuck in the middle. I'm going to try to pry it off so I don't make a mess. I think that's actually cooked. See if I can pry that a little bit. And if I'm still hungry, I can cook up the other. Got it off. See underneath? Not that bad at all. This is going to be awesome. Nicely cooked. Only eight minutes. Got my plate. And on this thing, this will even keep it warm, eating right off of the burner. I got my knife. While I'm waiting for this thing to heat back up for the second pizza, I'm going to go outside and secure it while it's still a little bit light. The crust is really good. Not breaking the best. Yeah. Let's see how that thing tastes. This is delicious. That's really good. A little bit crunchy though. All right, nice and hot again. Time to throw the second pizza on. Ow, that thing is way hotter than before. All right, eight minutes. All right, everyone, the sun is starting to go down. Sun will not be up again for about almost 12 hours. This tastes just like a Jolly Rancher. Yep, all done. Look at that. Look at the residue. Oh my gosh. Wow. I put more cheese on it so it actually touched the top. I'm going to have to wipe that off with a paper towel. Then um, the paper towel and the plate right here, I can actually go ahead and burn so an animal doesn't smell it in here. I wish I would have showed it. This one wasn't even stuck. Look at those really nice lines underneath there. This one's probably going to be better than the first. I put extra cheese. That pizza was good. I just lit this thing back up so I can burn off all that stuff. Scrape it off the ash. Then I can put this thing away. This thing is actually great for pizza. It cooks it nice. And then when the pizza's ready, this thing is not that hot. It keeps your plate nice and warm. Very nice. It is now 9.30 at night. All right, everyone. So for the past three hours, I've been editing this video. It started as about three hours worth of footage, and now I got it down to just over an hour at this point. 
Um, so now this heater is actually doing a good job. I am likely going to sleep with this thing on in here today. So we are staying at about 40 degrees. So maybe I'll actually even run it on high to get it even hotter in here. This tent is not made for winter time. This is actually a summer tent. So I had to go outside and secure this because this is a big screen. That's, it doesn't have a way of shutting it other than the top being over it. And we're also on ice. You see, my toes, I, they're actually getting a little cold despite the wool socks, but that won't be a problem at all once I get back onto my pad. I was actually just waiting for all the snow to melt off this, and I used that right there to mop up the floor. I have a little bit of snow here. I'll mop that up once it gets wet also. So now at this point, I'm just waiting for those log trucks to come by. They said they were going to start maybe around 10 or midnight. I wonder if they're going to end up waking me up, or I'll get to see some before I go to bed. I'm not really tired yet. Oh yeah, most of the heat from this actually, it rises up into here. It barely melts the floor. It would take many days for me to melt this where it would become unsafe. Running the heater all night is not a concern on the ice, not at all. I just had to change this propane cylinder. Not because this one ran out, but it actually froze. It's actually leaking a little gas out of the end of it. Yeah, it froze. So what's happening is actually the valve on the top, it can't shut properly because it froze in the open position. But there's still gas in here because it's leaking. I'm going to just go ahead and put it outside for a few minutes. In like 20 minutes, the propane should have defrosted enough where I can bring it back in. Status report. While going out to get more propane, how cold is it outside? About 19 degrees, I would say. And look at this. Look at all the frost all over the screen. Can't even see outside. If a truck did go by, I'd barely be able to see it other than the headlight. So much frost is all over this thing. Look at this. So much frost. And considering it's a very clear night and you can see the stars, I wouldn't be surprised if we made it down to like 10, maybe even colder. So, I went outside before and fixed this so this couldn't flap around. But still, there's a big gap right here with freezing cold air coming in, pouring down on the floor where I am. And my heat's escaping through that vent right there. So, I don't understand why this didn't happen last year. Last year, I remember this tent being so hot that I couldn't even leave this thing running. Alright, I just completely fixed that big draft of cold air. Putting the water bottle there, with that leaning against it really hard. Same with this side. That has stopped most of the draft. We were sitting at exactly freezing. Let's see if we can get that temperature to go up now. And listen to this echo. Woo! That goes pretty far. I bought more power banks, but the ones with this W on it means they were involved in falling in the water. In my last video, but they seem to be working fine, but who knows if they might have electrical issues in the future from corrosion. echoed so loud so far hey everyone I hear Jake breaks coming look what time it is we're sitting at 
34 degrees, about one degree Celsius. Let me pop outside. There's a truck coming, there's a truck coming. I gotta go fast, I gotta go fast. Come on, come on, open up, open up. I gotta open the screen too, because there's so much ice. I wanna see the truck over the bridge. Come on. Zipper open up. Wow, it just snow all over the tent. Is that snow or fog? Is that fog? You can't see barely anything. Yeah, it's like mist. Let me shut my camera flash off. It'll be better. I can see the headlight on the trees. I see the headlight. Here comes the truck. Outside, we have now dropped back to about 15 degrees. It is so quiet out that I can still hear that truck in the distance. We are still hovering at the freezing mark. This tank is now thawed, and I'm about to swap them again, because I can tell that one's about to freeze. This heater's on high, but it looks like it's on low. It's about to freeze up. There's an empty one coming back. I don't know if it's the same guy or not. There goes another one. Only four minutes later. That guy was right who talked to me earlier. They were going to be trucking all night. And I think I hear even another one may be coming. There's a pickup truck. Those Jake breaks can be heard sometimes 10 minutes before these guys even show up. I'm having so much fun. I'm going to purposely stay up longer because I'm not tired. I'm enjoying this a lot, watching these guys drive by. everyone it is now just past one o'clock we're keeping this place slightly above freezing i'm gonna try to go to sleep now so there are four log trucks out there now that came in empty eventually they're gonna come back out full maybe those trail cameras will pick it up but i'm gonna put my earplugs in so i can try to get some sleep i'm hoping to get like eight hours of sleep that would be actually awesome if i woke up around 10 o'clock because if I woke up around 10 or so, or 9, the sun will already be out, and it will quickly warm up. And that'll make things a lot better. Because right now, I just checked outside, it's 12 degrees. So we just put in tank number 3, that's all we use so far. And take a look at this. There's already getting crunchy, this water bottle's freezing because it's against the cold wall. You see the walls are covered in frost. Not up top because of all the heat collecting, but all around the edges of the tent are very frosty. That is my breath and also burning the propane. Propane is a wet fuel, meaning it will make frost and condensation all over the place. If I was burning oil or wood, those would be dry fuels. I don't want to get all covered in snow, so I'm not going to step outside, but I'm standing outside. 
Here comes another truck. I just wanted to show you, look at the frost. I've never seen frost so thick in my life. That's from that freezing fog I was showing you earlier. No, that's not snow. None of this is snow. That's some of the thickest frost I've ever seen. Created by freezing fog. Notice the rest of the tent doesn't have it because it's very warm. It does on the bottom edges though. Here comes the truck. Come to think of it, you see all that thick frost all over everything that wasn't heated? Do you think those cameras out there can even see anything? I almost forgot my earplugs. You know, I don't know when I'm going to wake up, but come to think of it, it would actually be kind of nice if I woke up at 7 o'clock, which is just about the crack of dawn this time of year because I noticed in the footage of the truck driving over the bridge it looks like all the trees are covered in the freezing fog also so that'd be very cool to see in the morning if I happen to wake up at 7 I'm not gonna force myself though whenever it happens it happens I doubt I would hear the alarm anyways with the earplugs especially if I'm in a deep sleep Yep, it suddenly just got really quiet with these things. Can't hear the hum of the propane heater anymore. I got a CO2 detector. I'm sure I'll hear that blaring noise if it needs to be. Also, this thing has a safety in it like every other space heater these days. If I accidentally hit it in my sleep and knocked it over, it would shut right off. But I'm going to leave that thing running tonight. It is chilly. Where's my hat?
check it out. We made it down to eight degrees outside. And my tent made it down almost that cold. Just woke up, it's almost eight o'clock and it was 10 in here. I got it up now to about 22. I just turned this burner on, not because I'm ready to eat. I'm just trying to warm it up in here a little bit. And that is working extremely fast to get this place hot compared to that. This thing is throwing a lot more heat. Yeah, the next time I come out in a place like this to winter camp, I think because, you know, I don't have that far of a walk from the car, I think I'm going to bring my giant propane heater with a 20-pound tank instead of this one pound tank heater. I think that'll work a lot better. The bigger tank, it will eventually freeze up, especially because the heater's bigger, but it'll take far longer. And that big tank is 14 hours of heat on low. I mean on high. On low it'll go like 30 hours, the big old ones. Because I got the CO detector, that'd be okay. I'm gonna try to get a little bit more sleep once this thing heats up a bit. That's gonna work very fast. Look at this, my juice turned into a very thick slushy. It looks good. Not right now though, too cold for that. Although this is heating me pretty fast. Ooh. Truck going over the bridge. That came unexpectedly because I got the earplugs on. Lots of frozen dribbles. Yeah, I'm tired, but I don't think I'm going back to sleep, so I'm going to start my morning with a cup of hot tea. And look at what both of my water bottles turn to. I'm getting some actual water out of it, but the entire thing is slush. See that? It's all slush. It never froze solid. It's not crunchy or anything. That could easily flash freeze if I left that around for a little longer. This is going to be my tea. I'm cooking it in this dish, which I think is just supposed to be a bowl. But the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to make this right here, which I suppose is already frozen. It comes in a bag. I'm going to put the bag inside this pot with water. And so the plastic's not touching the bottom where the burner is, where it could possibly melt. This is going to be sitting in this pan with a little bit of water between it. All right, the tea's ready. That's really cool, that truck got a big sifter on the back of it. I thought it was gonna be a log truck. You see how the sun is finally starting to peek out again? As it's hitting the ice, even though it's not that warm yet, the ice is starting to make some violent cracks just from the change in temperature. I just put the tea off to the side. It's steaming a lot, but it's not that hot. It's just very cold inside the tent still. We're just well, we're hovering around the freezing mark despite making all this heat. So this is what we got in here. It's actually big chunks once we get it out of the bag. So I'm going to put the bag upside down, I think, into here once I fill it with water. I don't think it has to be all the way down in there. I think that'll cook fine as long as I occasionally pick it up, you know, mush it around so it cooks evenly. This will probably run out of gas before it's done and I'll have to switch out that tank. Because, just look at the flame. Oh, no, we actually got a decent flame. But it looked like it was about to go out with that. Or at least about to freeze up. It's really cold out, and waking up with the tent being 10 degrees, my nostrils are sore, even my eyes are sore to blink them. But I wonder if that's from being too close to the heat, or it being so cold. Well, it's nice to have something warm to drink, finally. This is actually coming along good. As it sank down into the pot, 
it displaced a bunch of the water. So I poured it out into this tray, and I'm actually going to drink it because it'll actually warm me up. I imagine on very low like this, I just don't want it to accidentally puncture or melt through this. Even though this, this plastic, it can take a lot of heat. It has instructions. It tells you to microwave that, and it comes out way too hot to touch. But this thing's already starting to soften up. The bottom is already warm to the touch. It's fully cooked. You just have to warm it up or boil it. It would have been nicer if I had a bigger pot it could actually float in, but I don't. But this is actually going to work fine. I think probably in the next 20 minutes of slow heating, that'll be done, and I can just pour it into here. I had to turn down the burner as low as it could possibly go. It started becoming violent and kicking out water because bubbles are collecting between the pots, and they build pressure, and it causes it to go boom, boom, boom. Something like this, if you have the burner up too much, it can actually explode all over the place. Yeah, it's still occasionally splashing on the ground. I may end up having to keep turning it on and off every couple minutes. Because there is a lot of heat in the water that will transfer up there. Because you see it's boiling in the outer pot, but not the inner pot. Yep, see? Every time it pops like that, sometimes it splashes on the ground. It didn't do it that time, though. Next time I want to make something like this camping, I'm going to bring, like, a much bigger pot. Then I can just have the burner on high with this floating in it. Yep, you see it just splash on the ground. That's it. Shut it off. Turn it back on in a couple minutes. That was the second tractor trailer since I've been awake. I missed the first one because the first one wasn't using his Jake brake. So I assumed the noise coming down the road was a pickup truck or something. Only 30 seconds later. I'm cooking this thing very slow. It's now warm to the touch on the top, very hot if I lift it up and touch the bottom of the bag. And before, we were having trouble even keeping near the freezing mark. Now that the good old sun came out against my black tent, now we're up around 40. The sun is really helping. And it's only 9 o'clock. That's, that's, that's the time of year it is. It gets very cold at night, and it gets... Decently warm in the afternoon. Look at all these icicles. Hopefully when I wrap this thing up all moist, hopefully it can dry out when I put it into my house. Hear all that dripping? All the snow and frost on the tent is melting off in the sun. Right underneath the heater. There's a good quarter inch of water sitting there that the heater has melted. I just went outside because I had to go to the bathroom. Take a look at the trees right there. You can't really see it much. You see there's a little bit of frost on the trees. It, it really looked cool and illuminated a lot with the headlights of the truck last night. But even when I woke up today at 7 a.m., I just couldn't see it. I thought it would have been as thick as I showed on the tent last night, but apparently not way up in the trees, so I guess the freezing fog was just collecting down here where I am. So I'm gonna go back in now, have my breakfast. I'm wide awake now, especially after having a coffee. And with my tent right in the sun, there's no issue anymore keeping heat going. I can hear my heater in there making a high pitch whine. It usually does that when it's about to go out from the tank freezing because it's slowly getting snuffed out the gas passing through the valve that's icing up that's what's making the high pitch sound because it's closing like a whistle all right everyone i think wow. flatten that out all right everyone i think it's time to have breakfast the bottom of this is nice and hot so i'm just gonna stir it around It'll even itself out as far as heat. Cut the bag open, pour it in the tray, take a look at it, and start eating. 
I'm going to put another propane tank on this thing so I don't have to keep shaking it. Shut that off. You see how these propane cans have the plastic bottom? That makes it very unsturdy in here. And you can't just remove it. That actually makes it worse. Just a year ago, the bottom was metal. And it was very sturdy. I used one last week, one of my older propane cans. This stuff is really good. Especially the parts that are really fatty. That'll give me a lot of energy today, I'm sure. See, it's seasoned with pepper. Lots of barbecue sauce. Yummy. There it is. It's actually starting to get hot in here. Really good. I finished eating just in time. I hear another big truck coming. For the very first time, the whole camp, we got to 55 degrees. That's probably going to be our highest we're going to get to. Because I'm going to start picking this up as soon as that truck goes by. Oh, it was pretty cool last night. How are you? Good. Uh, I can't believe people will sleep in a tent in the winter time. Yeah, um, it, I have a little propane heater in here. Okay. It's not that bad. <laughs> Gosh, how long are you staying there? I'll, I'll be out of here in like two hours. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I was just here overnight for fun. Yeah. I like your smiley face. Thank you. Well, you must see all kinds of trucks. You must have heard trucks all night. Yeah. It, it, you slept much. Yeah, it was very interesting to watch. I just used earplugs. <laughs> then it's night shift now. Yeah. They usually haul in the day, but the roads are given out, so they haul from uh, 12 at night till about 2 o'clock this afternoon. Yeah. And the road shut. Yeah. So what are you doing? Just trying out, staying out in the wilderness? Yeah. Are you alone? Yeah, I'm alone. Oh, yeah. So how hot was it in there? Um, Last night, most of the night I managed to keep it at about freezing. Just above freezing? Yeah, just above freezing or so. Outside got down to 8. Wow. Are you got a camera going? Yeah, um... I find the trucks pretty interesting, so that's a motion camera. Okay. <laughs> well, have fun. Yeah, have a good day. Thank you. You heading back today? No, I'm probably going to stay out another d day, but in a different place. Yeah? Yeah. It's quicker to go through Canada. 
Yeah. I'm not sure. Um, I, I, I'm going to have to get a passport. I don't have one at the moment. Yeah, I, I gotta go back through. Yeah, see ya. Have a good day. That guy was nice. Here's our last temperature recording before we start packing up. Currently outside, it is about 36 degrees. And inside, we have managed to get up to 58. All right, everything is out of the tent and onto the porch. And just my luck, as soon as I got everything weighting it down, the wind started picking up. But we're gonna collapse this thing pretty fast, get it packed up. We should have everything back up to the car in like maybe 40 minutes. I got my toothbrush and water on the floor because I still have to rinse that off. I just brushed my teeth because that meat really gets stuck in your teeth. I got a big day ahead of myself. It's almost 11 o'clock. We're, 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 we're doing all right. I'm pretty sure I know where I'm parking for tonight. I saw this very dense area of forest that I want to camp in, you know, dark with a lot of pine tree cover. I think that'll be a good place for tonight. I'll definitely arrive there in time with a couple hours to set up, search for firewood, cut down maybe a dead tree. That's what's going to keep us warm tonight. And as a backup, I am going to have my space heater, which I'll probably run at night because I have the really small camping stove, which doesn't keep itself warm all night. I actually made that fit. I didn't think I was gonna be able to. I, I know I didn't roll it up correctly, but patience paid off. I got it to eventually fit after crushing the air out of it.
Look at that. There's that little pummel that was in front of the heater. I was able to put everything away way faster than I thought. Look at that puddle where the heater was. That's what I was showing you underneath the tarp earlier. I kind of washed out my tray. That'll be put in the car with all the rest of the garbage. And you see, everything's cleaned up. The only thing we're leaving behind is a little bit of barbecue sauce and a little bit of pee. That's it. So that tent went down a lot easier than I thought it would. You know, I was actually a little fearful because of what I did last time I used it. The last time I used it, I actually didn't package it back up because it was a little wet. I'm going to have to set this thing up on a dry day so it doesn't um, grow mildew. Or I'm going to have to clean it at some point. But last time I did that, I just rolled it up. I didn't actually put it away. Because as soon as I got home, I set it up in the house so it could dry off, then put it away. And folding it up in a very cramped house is probably the reason why I feared it. That's what made it so bad in my head. But that was very easy to put away, that tent. I actually really like that tent, but that is not a winter tent. Next year, I want to buy an actual winter tent, probably an insulated one. Because if that thing was insulated, the insulated tents, they're not paper thin like that. They're actually thicker like a quilt or a comforter. They're thicker and made out of fabric they cost a little bit more but that thing would have it would have kept a normal house temperature if it was insulated like that this thing was very drafty i'm just wondering why last time i used it i didn't have that problem maybe i put it together tighter there was something different about the situation but i actually did not get the worst night of sleep well, looking at the time-lapse footage, it appears I actually got four hours of sleep. It looks like I woke up a few times, you know, to turn the heat on because my brain was telling me, it's cold in here, you got to go turn that heat back on because it kept freezing and shutting off and I had to replace the tank a few times. But that worked out well. That was kind of fun. I did not expect to see all those trucks. And you heard the guy, he said they're trucking mainly at night between midnight and two in the afternoon that's when all their trucks are running so we'll probably pass a good amount of them once we get on the road tonight i'm probably going down the road about 20 miles or so still very very deep out in the woods with no signal and after tonight we're gonna try to do it with the hot tent and tomorrow night i'm still gonna be out here but i'm gonna be going in camping in the car i have some emergency blankets i'm thinking i can hang around inside the car you know to like insulate myself and then i think that propane heater will actually keep the car very warm i've never actually used a propane heater in the car but as long as i have the co detector i don't see the issue with it usually when i'm camping out here in the middle of winter for whatever reason Whenever I get cold, I just click the car on and off occasionally. It takes like 10 minutes for the engine to start producing heat. And I, I know people are going to say that's unnecessary wear and tear, but, you know, it's the easiest thing I can do. It doesn't really matter. I don't do it that often. I maybe camp out here in the car maybe one, two dozen times a year. During the warmer months, I'm sleeping in my car like 25% of the time. In the winter, not too often. And my car's lasted me a long time. It's already up to 318,000 miles. I never thought it would get there. But it is, and still running strong. Nothing has ever broken on it. Gotta be happy for that. But it is getting older, and hopefully when it does decide to break, it's not out here. Every time I bring my car in for service, they're shocked that a six-year-old car has that kind of miles. I was also thinking about maybe next winter I would go ahead and maybe rent a snowmobile for a weekend, bring it out to a place like this. Because where I am now is actually perfect parking. You got that trail going right down to the river. I could pull a sled like this and go wherever these guys were going. Go real far down the river. Camp somewhere very remote. 
just right on the riverbank. That'd be kind of fun someday. Thinking about that for next winter. Take a look right here how much the river dropped since it froze. Dropped at least two feet. All right, and this is the point where I need my snowshoes for the like the last 70 feet to the road. Just can't make it. And look at this, there's even some raccoon tracks. Yeah, I think those are raccoon tracks and you see, they walked right over my tracks. So they came by last night. Is that raccoon? Oh, yeah, I'm sinking, I need my snowshoes. I literally can't see the screen, but is that a raccoon you think? The sun is just so bright out. Went right up to the road, maybe even crossed that bridge last night. Here's the worst part. Got it up to the road. Now I'm gonna take everything out of the sled and only put the stuff back that I'm gonna be using for tonight, which is the majority of the stuff in here is not being used tonight. Swap out the tent using the same sleeping stuff. Swapping the, no, I'm, I'm actually gonna keep the heater and use the wood stove. I just started my car because I pulled down my window and it sounded weak, like the battery was starting to go. Oh my gosh, and here comes another log truck down there. All right, gotta put the stuff in the sled away too.
Look at this, the memory foam is frozen just like I told you and I just removed two bottles. Everything out. Now let's get everything out of here we don't need. All right, everything we need for tonight. We don't need those different angles of pipe or anything Think for a hot tent. We don't need this tent. We don't need that grill tonight. We need these two items that'll go on the top. And I'll stuff all these things around it while we're driving. Just not on the sled to make it easier later. Even though almost everything's frozen, yes, I do still bring my rakes. I still got my big high boots. Because you really never know. But I think it could even be potentially another month before the snow is gone. Because remember, historically, it can, it can possibly snow through the entire month of May in this area. All right, I got everything stuffed back in there. Believe it or not, it's already 42 degrees outside. It's about to be noon. Got to go get that camera off the bridge. Unfortunately, I didn't bring my card reader, but I'll edit that and put it at the end of this video. Tonight's camp is going to be in part two. I'll probably post that in a day or two because I don't want this video to be too long. Both of these camps together would be almost three hours. So here's the second camera. Uh, maybe it saw a few trucks, but it's absolutely covered in mud, the lens. Makes sense, but hopefully that mud is from right now. Remember, the bridge was already frozen when I put this thing up, so hopefully it got some nighttime trucks. Look at my big smiley face. Just look at the amount of tracks I made. It does kind of look like there was maybe more than one person with me. See, I have multiple trails going back. All right, let's get off the bridge. All right. I think it's just the motor. The motor's kind of weak, maybe because it's cold. All right, let's start moving. car was a little frozen in there at first. Here we go across the bridge. Yeah, that's gonna maybe start beeping because I have the gas cans on the seat. woods are pretty open. This is a good spot to camp. There's a lot of openings where I could pull a sled this big through. At least the roads aren't all icy like they would have been last night if I went on them. At least I'd rather be on mud than ice. Mud is also slippery, but at least if you go slow, you can control yourself on it. Alright, I hope today's video was interesting everyone. Thanks for watching and have a great day. I will leave part two of this in the description. Thanks for watching.
I would say it's actually a little smaller than I thought from up above. All right, everyone, so I'm starting to talk very quietly now, so I don't startle you after not talking for a little while. So right now I'm showing you some footage that the trail cameras got. This is the camera up on the bridge, and to my surprise, it got a lot colder than I expected that night. I told you guys my official temperature was negative 8, but what you will see right now is it got actually down below 0 quite a bit. I didn't know that because my thermometer was in the porch of the tent. And these temperature sensors were actually outside. The one down in the river recorded a lot colder. Just watch as the trail camera footage goes on. You're going to see that temperature plunge. I thought this footage you're seeing right now is pretty cool. It starts as just a dark screen, nothing going on. And then suddenly a big gust of wind just blows a bunch of freezing fog across the bridge. That's what caused it to really freeze up on the tent. And here's a bunch of loud trucks. I'm going to stop talking. Alright, so this truck actually completely stopped on the bridge. This is a log truck, and I'm thinking he saw my light inside the tent and was wondering what's down there. Could it possibly be someone that fell off the bridge? Well, he quickly noticed what it was and started back on his way. You saw he briefly put on his hazards. Then you can see the light slowly moving away from the camera. So right here at the end of the video, I spliced all the footage together so I can show you the nice sunset and then the sunrise afterwards. Unfortunately, when I was editing, I accidentally missed one of the trucks during the early morning hours. So you're going to see a truck that I didn't show you in real time. I accidentally lost the footage before I noticed it was even there. Also, the camera on the bridge only had a 16 gigabyte card, and because it kept getting tripped for who knows what reason, it worked out because we got to make a good time lapse, but the camera died just after sunrise. So a lot of the trucks during the daytime that I filmed from below outside the tent will not be picked up on this camera, but thankfully they are all picked up on the camera I left down in the river. That camera does not record sound like this one, but it's okay, it actually got some pretty good footage of the trucks going overhead. Alright, so now we're going to switch to the camera down below and show you what it saw. So here's me probably walking back up to the car to get something. Notice the temperature down below. Not that cold yet, 
But as we go through the night, it's going to get very cold. Look at the temperature now. Yeah, there is a lot of fog. You can't really see the trucks that well now. But wait until you see the daytime footage. That's pretty good. And look at that. Look how cold we are now. Yep. We got way colder than I picked up on the porch of the tent. And this is on top of a trail camera. You know, it's almost six feet off the ground. And that's usually where you want to take an accurate reading of the outdoor temperature. That's where the weather stations typically take it. Wow, did you just see that last temperature? That was so cold. So that is our official low overnight. That's pretty awesome. And you're seeing as the sun come up, just like I recorded inside the tent, it's going up fast. Look at this truck. This guy is slowing way down, wondering what I'm doing. I think that guy waved or took a picture of me. He put something up out of the window that I noticed when I was watching him. Look at that log truck. This is the guy here. He just started his engine and is taking off. That's the guy who actually talked to me, and I later passed him on the road. Later on, when I passed him on the road, he was waving at me like crazy, excited to see me going by. And now, the temperature you're seeing now, that is not accurate. That is because the trail camera is dark, and it conducts the sun's rays. When a trail camera is in the sun, it does not read correctly. But at night... That's absolutely correct, because nothing is making it colder, but the sun is definitely making it warmer. And just like I did with the other camera, here's a quick time lapse, but this time lapse obviously is not as good, because it wasn't being tri uh, tripped by random things like the other one. So now I'm just showing you basically everything this one got just combined real fast. Yep. And here's some pictures of myself. Thanks for watching, everybody, and have a great day.